Hello everyone, welcome to Theme Girl. In this video, I'll show you how to create a user profile page or a My Account page on your site. For this, we'll be using the user registration plugin. I'll show you both the free and the premium method. We'll be creating both the registration and the My Account page, and we'll customize the My Account page with custom tabs, custom content, links, styles, and so much more. So let's get started. But before we do, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. All right, so here we are within WordPress. Let's get started with creating a custom user profile page for your WordPress site. Now, the plugin we're going to be using in this video is this user registration and membership plugin right here. Now, if you just want to create a simple My Account page on your site, you don't have to do much. You can simply get the free version plugin and you can follow this tutorial. But if you want to customize the My Account page, like you want to add custom tabs with custom content, you want to render short codes, you want to make changes to colors, padding, and make it really appealing, then you're gonna have to purchase the premium version of this plugin, which you can purchase it from their site, wpuserregistration.com. And specifically, you're gonna have to get this plus plan right here. It is going to give us all the extensions necessary. It's a simple checkout process. Simply click on buy now, and then you get your login credentials off of the payment goes through. Then once you log in from the dashboard, you can download this user registration pro zip file. And within the license keys tab, you'll get your license key, copy this as well. And once you've done that, let's get back to WordPress. Now, if you're using the free version, you can simply install it from within WordPress by going to plugins, add new, but I'm going to be using the pro version for this video. So let's go ahead, click and upload plugin, and let's choose the download file that I just downloaded, open and install. I actually had the download file pre-downloaded, so yeah, keep that in mind. Let's activate the plugin. Now, upon activation, you'll be redirected to their setup wizard. Simply click on get started. And now I'm gonna allow this. So what this plugin is going to do is it's going to give you a registration form. It's going to give you a registration page. And the thing that we really want is this My Account page or the user profile page. So this plugin is not just giving you a user profile page, but it's also giving you a registration system with a registration form that you can edit. Like you can add more fields to the form and you can do all sorts of customization and integrations. So yeah, let's click on next. Now, if you want people to start registering right away, then you can enable this. If you don't want them, you can disable it. Anyways, here you can choose the default user approval and login behavior if you want users to be automatically approved and they have to manually log in you can do that or if you want automatic login you can do that if you want admin approval so you or the admin has to manually approve every single user then you can choose that option as well but for now i'm going to leave it at auto approval and manual login now here i can choose which role i want to prevent from accessing the wordpress dashboard or the wordpress backend currently it's set to subscriber i'm going to leave it at that Let's do next. Now, if you want to enable strong password and set a password strength requirement, you can do that as well. I'm going to leave it off for now. And here you can choose the default user role whenever a user registers to your site. Currently it's set to subscriber. I'm gonna leave it at that as well. Now here we've got our user profile or the my account page right here and you can choose its layout. Now you can choose a horizontal layout where all the tabs are laid out horizontally on the top or a vertical layout. I really like the vertical layout so I'm gonna choose that. And if you want to disable profile picture you can do that. But in my opinion a profile picture makes the user profile page really appealing so I'm gonna leave it enabled. And there we go. We're done. Now let's go ahead and let's visit our site first. Let's view the registration page from here. As you can see, this right here is the registration form. It's a really basic, simple form. And also keep in mind this site right here, it is a completely plain site. I've not done any sort of customization to it. I've just added the themes. So that is why it looks kind of bland right now. Anyways, this registration form, you can add more fields to it. You can receive email notifications. Yeah, you can do all those in the free version, but in this video, we're more interested in the user profile page or this my account page right here. Now, if you're using the free version, then this is all you're getting. You'll get a dashboard. Users can change their password and they can log out as well. And if you want to do any sort of customization, you can make use of CSS and get like code snippets or something, but that is it. But now if you're using the premium version, you can go a step further. Let's go ahead. Let's go back to our backend. Now from here, the first thing that we need to do is we need to activate our plugin because currently our plugin is not activated. So remember the license key that I told you to copy? Yes. Go within plugins. You'll see the user registration pro right here and you'll see this license field. Simply paste in your license key and hit enter. And now there we go. The license has been activated. And now finally, if we go within user registration, extensions then we'll see that all these extensions have been unlocked so now for this video the extensions that we'll need is this customize my account right here simply enable it and the second one that we need is style customizer simply enable this module as well 
Now, once it has been activated, we're ready to customize our My Account page. Now, if we go back and if I refresh this, then now you see that our My Account page or the user profile page has now changed. You've got these icons right here and you've got this edit profile tab here as well from where users can edit out the information that they filled in while registering. Anyways, let's first learn how we can add different tabs within this My Account page and how we can add content within those tabs, how to add links, and then we'll get into the actual customization of the style of this page. So from within your WordPress, press dashboard go within settings and now you should be able to see customize my account option right here simply click on it then you should see something like this you'll be able to see all the endpoints within your my account page you can add new endpoints and here you can make changes to different aspects of a slug so currently we have these four tabs right here and you can see these are the four tabs we got now first of all let's go ahead and let's add a new endpoint we're going to go right there, click on this drop down and choose endpoint and hit OK. Now you can add something like downloads maybe. And there you go. Download was successfully added as an endpoint and you can move it around. Maybe I want it to be right after dashboard so I can simply slide it right there. And there we go. Now there's a few different things we can do. You can make changes to the slug. So whenever a user goes within, say, edit password, then you can see here within the URL, we've got slash my account slash edit password. So you can edit out this slug here. You can change the label if you want to add icons. You can choose an icon so since this is a download i'm gonna look for a download icon i'm gonna put that now if you want to restrict this endpoint to a certain user rules then you can do that as well maybe i want it to be restricted for subscribers then now the subscribers will not be able to see this download endpoint and yeah let me save it and let's see how it looks in the front end so if I refresh this, then we should see that we have a download endpoint right here. So currently it is showing this default My Account page content right here because we don't have any custom content. So what we can do is we can go back and we can add custom content and it will override that content. I'm simply going to type in test. I'm going to save the changes. And if I refresh this page, then you can see that we've got this text right here. Now, what can you do? You can do a few different things in here. Like I've got this text. I can change its formatting. Those are the basic stuffs. I can add smart tags. Now smart tags are values that you can change out dynamically. You can choose from any of these smart tags right here and you can dynamically display those values right here. Like suppose I have a user John interacting with my site. Maybe I want something like, hey, John, then I'll, I'll type in, hey, and then I'll choose the user display name smart tag right here. And it's going to display the username, John. And that is how you basically use smart tags to display dynamic content. I'm just going to save it. Let me show you how it looks. Currently, this is my username. And yeah, this is how that smart tag works. Now, besides this, what you can do is you can render short codes in here. Now suppose I'm using a different plugin. In my case, I'm using this contact form plugin Everest Forms right here, and it uses a shortcode to render content, like to render the form. So if you're using different plugins like that, which can render content with the help of shortcodes, then you can simply go within user registration. Then you can generate those content within your user registration my account page. Simply go back to settings, customize my account, and within the endpoint that you want to render the content, simply paste your short code. Once you've done that, you can save the changes. And if you go back, look at the front end, there you go, we have a form. So yes, that was just a demo of what you could do. So just like how we made changes to this download slug right here, you can do the same for every other content right here. Even the default ones like the dashboard content, you can modify the default content values like you can modify it. Or if you don't like this whatsoever, you can simply remove it and create something custom of your own. So yes, you can do that as well. You can also see right here how different smart tags have been used like display name, profile picture box, which generates the user's profile picture. If they have uploaded a profile picture, their full name, profile details, link, edit password, link using which users can change their password and you have this sign out link right here as well anyways you can modify this content if you want to add media like images etc you can do that as well but right now we're not going to do anything too fancy anyways what i'll show you however is how to add a link so if you click on add new right here and you choose a field type and you select link then alongside all these endpoints you'll get another endpoint which will redirect users elsewhere so i'm going to click on link Okay, and I'm going to type in something like YouTube. If I want to redirect users to my YouTube channel, well, I can do that as well. I'm going to click on OK, and YouTube link has been added successfully. Now what I can do is I can paste in my YouTube URL. I can also add an icon. So simply search for something like YouTube, YouTube Play. And if you want this link to be opened in a new tab, you can simply check this box right here and then simply click on Save Changes. So yeah, this right here is the YouTube link, and you can see that it links to our YouTube channel. When I click on it, it'll redirect me to YouTube. So there we go that's how links work and there's also two kinds of links that you can use you can use external website link or you can also use internal page link you can select which page you want to redirect users to if you have a page like that anyways right now i'm just going to leave it at external website link and yeah
Do you remember within the setup wizard, we had two different layouts. We had a horizontal layout and a vertical layout. I really like this vertical layout, but I'll also show you what the horizontal layout looks like. I'm gonna choose the horizontal layout from the general settings, the general options within the user registration settings. Anyways, this is what the horizontal layout looks like. I can click on these tabs and the content will change. But I really like the vertical one, so I'm gonna keep using that, save changes. And okay, so now we have made a custom My Account page, but how do we customize it? How do we change its style? Well, from your customize My Account settings, you can go with an advanced settings right here. And if you've enabled the style customizer add-on, then you'll see you can load a style customizer and you can edit the My Account page or design the My Account page, my bad. So yes, here within the style customizer, you can make changes to a lot of different aspects of the page. Like if you want to make changes to the wrapper, like, you know, you want to change the background color. Well, you can do that. I'm just going to make it slightly gray because why not? There we go. If you want to add a border, well, you can do that as well. A dotted border, a dashed border or a solid border. And if you want to change its color, let's actually change its color because why not? I'm just going to select a slightly darker gray. You know what? This is okay. Whatever. And you can also make changes to the radius. Something like 14 should be fine. Yeah, sure, why not? You know, 12. And you can also increase the content padding, just like so. There we go, I'm just gonna leave it at 60. You can also make changes to the margin right here, which I'm not going to fiddle around with. Anyways, let me just save this. Let's go back now. Let's make changes to the color maybe. If I want to change colors for my headings, well, I can do that. Something like maybe two should be good. Okay, this is like slightly ash, slightly gray color. I really like it. I'm gonna do the same for everything else actually, because why not? Now for links, I think I'm just gonna leave it at the default blue because you know, that way it stands out. And link hover, maybe I want to make it slightly lighter. So yep, let's make it slightly lighter. I don't know how to do that exactly. I'm just gonna select a random blue. Yeah, you know what, good enough. Anyways, let's save it. And also, I don't think I need to say this, but yeah, you can view all the changes right here. You can see our hover colors has changed and all these colors have changed. So yeah. All right, so now the next option here is navigation. So this right here is the navigation. So if we click on it, uh, we can make changes to the navigation wrapper, which is this empty area right here. You can change its background color. Currently, it's kind of light bluish. So let's change it. Let's change it to something slightly dark, because why not? And you can also add a border to it if you want to, but I'm not going to. I don't think we need border for that. And yeah, if you want to, you can add radius to this part of the page as well, which I'm not going to do anyways. So it's going to save it. And you can also switch between the horizontal and the vertical layout from within here. So that's nice. And oh, I almost forgot. You have this navigation width right here, which you can change. I don't know why I forgot to show it, but yeah, you can make changes to the width. I think I'm just going to leave it at 20. It looks all right. Let's go back. Navigation link. So it's all these areas right here with endpoints. Let's select a different background color for it. And you guessed it right. It's going to be something dark because I think that is the only color I know, <laughs> I guess. Uh, let's make the hover color something light. Yeah, good enough. Or what if we just make it dark? Yeah, sure. Why not? And now let's change the text color to white. And you can also select the text hover color from right here. Maybe I just I'm just gonna set it something a little bit dark and that should be okay. Now, if I want to add border to this section, I can do that as well. Radius, padding, there's all these options. I'm just gonna save it for now. Let's go back. So now here you can see forms. This is basically for the change password form that we have or any other sort of form that renders within the My Account page. You can customize it as well. You can customize the field labeled size, color. If you want to add margin, you can do that. I'm just gonna leave it at five. Font size, if you want to make change to that, you can do so. I'm just gonna leave it at 14 because I think it looks all right i can make changes to the colors as well i'm just gonna set it fully black because it's all right save it let's go back you can change the field styles if you want to change the background color you can do that you can choose which background color when the field is focused you can choose the text color when someone is typing you can choose the text color when that field is focused or being interacted with you can add borders padding you got all that and if you're using checkboxes or radios within they can change its styles as well let's go back now here you'll see buttons. You can make changes to the style of the buttons within this My Account page as well. You can see we have a button right here. I'm going to change its color to something. Yes, you guessed it. It's going to be something gray. Actually, I'm just going to put in 2222. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And hover color whenever a user is hovering on it. I'm going to change this to something just a little bit lighter. Let's save it. 
and I can also make changes to the text color right here. I'm just going to leave it at white. Hover color for the text as well. I can change that. I can add margin. I can add padding. But yeah, right now, I think they all look about all right. Maybe I'm just going to decrease this font size and I'm going to save it. This looks okay. And there you go. That's how you can customize the My Account page. You can also add additional CSS of your own if you want to manipulate different things using your own code. So yes, the opportunities are endless. And of course, the plugin is always updating. And yes, as time goes, new features will be added and things are only going to get better. But first, before I show you how a user would interact with this My Account page, I'm going to edit this form right here. If you go with the user registration, all forms, you'll see the default registration form. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to get a profile picture field right here, which is only available with the advanced fields add-on. So let me go ahead and let me enable it real quick. And we should see an extension called advanced fields. This right here, enable it. And now let's go back and let's edit the form. Within all forms, edit the default form. And then here, now we can add a profile picture field simply drag and drop it within the form update the form now let's see how a user would interact with your my account page but before that a user needs to be registered to your site so let's register a user all right so this right here is the default registration form and don't worry about these i've not customized the form so please bear with me i'm just going to add in a test user test at the right test.com the password is just going to be test test and I'm gonna upload a profile picture. I can also take a profile picture, but I'm just gonna upload one. I'm gonna upload this, cause why not? Now I can crop my picture just like so. Crop it and let's submit. And apparently passwords cannot match with the username or the email address. So I'm just gonna add in one, two, three submit let's see and there we go i've been registered to the site now if i go within the my account page it's going to ask me to log in the my account page also works as a login page so now i'm going to simply type in my account credentials test at the right test.com and it's test one two three remember me now i can log in and voila there we go this right here is the my account page and this is what they'll see they got their profile picture if they want to edit any other profile details they can simply go with an edit profile they can change their username their user email and whatever other fields you had in your registration form all the information that you collected users will be able to change all those they can change out their profile picture as well if they want to edit their password they can simply go here within the edit password tab they can edit the password if you want to add any helpful links you've got youtube right here any other links you want to you can simply add it as well and if the user wants to log out they can simply click on user log out and they can confirm and log out and there we go that's how a user would interact with the my account page or the user profile page within your wordpress site using the user registration plugin so i hope you found this video helpful if you did drop a like subscribe and i'll see you whenever i'll see you take care